All right, so today we are back with three awesome people from the SMF, which stands for, say it with me, Storm. Storm Wipes Modding All right, just say, say it yourself. That's fine. I, I don't have to say it. And uh, we have with us, we have Zui Quinn. So how do you say your name? Zui uh, Quinn. Zui Quinn. Mandarin. Mandarin. And we have Ludinator, I think, with numbers at the Luinator. end. Ludinator. Ludinator 56. Yeah. Or my Steam name, Ambitious, but rubbish. Whatever and, you decide suitable. And finally, we have Delta. Delta CX10. Yeah, I forget the numbers. You can't put all this on me. I, I'm, I've got a short memory. All right, so we are going to be going through what Storm Loader is, what you can do to install it, and how safe is it. Let's get started. Delta, go ahead and, and tell us about yourself. So, I guess I'm technically no founder of Storm's Modding Forum. I kind of just, I guess, brought the good people together, like all the modelers and, well, Luinator, to actually make all the cool tools. Okay, so you kind of pretty much started the Discord and kind of got people together to start working on this mod because is it something that you and somebody else wanted to do, or how did that start? We, Me and my friends really like the game. But we thought of so many cool new features that we'd like to have in, so we decided, well, we could probably just put them in ourselves and have a lot of fun making it. Okay, very cool. All right, and so in order to get this started, did it always have the storm loader, or was it manually at first? It, manual started, it started manual. Like, it, it started slow. It's kind of grindy because we had to figure out all these intricate things. But, you know, once Luinator got on and started building Steam... You know, it's it was got easier and easier over time. All right, so that brings us to Lunator. So what is your part in all this? So I sort of got dragged over to um, the Stormworks Mudding Form Discord after talking about um, .mesh format um, on the official Discord. I, I'd sort of looked into it because I was actually looking at how there would be a way to add um, custom blocks. And I'd looked at the .mesh format and I didn't, really get very far with it um but then i had someone say oh come over to the um smf discord and uh, and see if uh, there's anything you can do on there to help uh, and after doing that i sort of got a bit of extra information that helped me uh, finish sort of decoding the dot mesh format so once i did that i then wrote um a tool that would let you convert an object file dot abj into a dot mesh so then once i did that people could start uh, making custom blocks for the game. Um, and then as that sort of gained steam, it became evident that there needed to be some way to quite easily manage all of these uh, add-ons that people were making. So I decided I'd try and write a simple mod loader, um, which is Storm Loader. This sort of got a bit more complicated as it went on and there's new features being added, like an online repository of mods and I'm working on support for um, Nexus mods. So sort of I've been a programmer that's just been sort of helping the community along. And then the last person that we have here, there's more than one of these types of 3D model uh, mod makers. But we have here, oh, I can't say the name again, Zui Quan. Zui Quan. Zui Quan. Zui Quan's fine. That's what everyone <laughs> calls me. Okay. And you are a volunteer 3D model maker, correct? Yeah, so um, I started ma I started playing Stormworks because uh, I love ships, I love ocean liners, and so I wanted to make you know the old timey ocean liners, and I really wanted things like uh, you know uh, telegraphs and uh, you know that type of stuff, and I saw uh, the mod the Stormworks modding forum on the official Discord. I saw uh, them talking about it, so so I I went and visited, started looking at the tutorials. And I was like, I think I, maybe I can make some stuff. So um, watch some Blender tutorials on how to make low poly objects and just started getting to work and just kind of fell in love with making uh, making these models and importing them into Stormworks. The uh, mesh converter makes it super easy to do. So it just took off from there. All right, very cool. So that rounds up our three people. And so I do not have anything installed on my computer. I don't have zero, zero mods. And so we're going to take a look at what 
the storm loader does and how it works, what it installs, what it, you know, we want to make sure that when you use this mod, if you're interested in using this mod from these guys, that you feel comfortable installing it and what it's doing to your Stormworks uh, game files. All right, so we are going to load something uh, that has mods on it, and we're going to see what happens. I know you guys already know, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. And here it is. It is a train that had some mods on it. Now, I don't know what the train okay. looked like with the mods. Do you know what's missing on this thing? <laughs> Yeah, uh, not, namely the floor and large parts of the controls, as well as a lot of, like, the rails on the side here, okay. and some lights. So as you can see, it loaded, even though this did have mods on it, it did load into Stormworks, and I guess it kind of works, maybe? Does it, does, do mods disable functionality? Um, well, in this instance... It did because we no longer have the controls to control the train. Okay, so the mods do actually have uh, parts that you can, like, I guess, like buttons and stuff like that that you can add? Yeah, like if you use cosmetic parts, for the most part, it won't disable any functionality. But as soon as you uh, do any of the, uh, you know, buttons, oh no, okay. then I can't hear anything you can rely on them. So just to recap, uh, this thing did have mods. We loaded it up, the mods did not show up because I don't have mods installed on my Stormworks, and the functionality broke because this particular vehicle used mods that were like buttons and, you know, like maybe there was like, I don't know, uh, steam valves or something like that that you could click on. And now, if we go inside the cab, they're probably missing. Yeah, see there's stuff missing here and there. So that's why this did not load and remain functional, however, You'll note that it did not crash my Stormworks. The vehicle still loaded. So everything as far as the game is fine. And that's what's important, that mods do not crash your game. All right, so next up, I think we should go ahead and show me how to install mods without using the Storm Loader because some people are kind of fearful of downloading execution files onto the computer. And if we can install these mods by simply unzipping a file into directories, that would be pretty cool for people that are a little bit hesitant to use an exe file so can we do that yeah that's really easy to do all right so i guess we're going to have to get out of stormworks right because it has to be closed when i do this um you will need to you don't need to close stormworks but you will need to exit the world you'll have to reload the world okay all right so let's do that and then i'm going to show my desktop all right so now we are on my desktop and i have a background loaded that's going to show you kind of what you can get out of the mods now correct me if i'm wrong is this only one of the modules or is this like everything you get when you install with the storm loader this is just one of the mods that someone and there's several more modules that you can install that have different props and stuff yeah there's load there's quite a few mods available um there's a few available on the uh, repo for storm loader um but most people have just published stuff on the stormworks mod inform discord uh, there's probably 30 or so different packs people have made now okay so the the different packs are on the discord yeah, there's, there's most of the stuff's been published onto the um, SMF Discord, and then some people have also put stuff on the Stormloader repository. All right, so I guess we're going to start off with doing it manually, and so I'm going to go to the Nexus mod. Is that a good idea? That's probably, yeah. If you want to do it manually, get it from there. All right, so uh, this is uploaded by Zooey, and it is on the Nexus mod, and we'll link to this as well if you want to find this. And this is just going to allow us to download, what, a zip file? Yeah, it's just a .zip file. Okay. Manual. It's got two folders in it, definitions and meshes. Slow download. Yes, we're going to go with a slow download. All right, so here's the file. If you can see it, I'm kind of moving it around on my giant desktop. But let's look inside before we install this, because I am curious how safe this file is. Is there something in here that I should be worried about? So we're going to install it to a folder and open the folder up and check it out here. All right, so... What am I looking at? I have definition and meshes. What are the definitions? So definitions are uh, the XML block definitions. They basically tell the game the properties of the block, um, you know, how it can be placed, what its collision is, uh, what features it, it is. If it, is it an engine, for example? Does it have um, logic nodes? It basically just is defining what the block is. Um, may I ask you a question about this? Because I haven't installed this for at least a year and I don't recall. 
Is this different from XML editing of a window or a block that some people do in the game? Yes. Kind of. So if you XML edit, say, a window, you're actually editing the save XML for a vehicle. Um, and so when you do that, the changes are actually applied to the vehicle based uh, you know, in the XML for the vehicle. So it's not actually something that requires you know, external parts to have those changes. I mean, you'll notice the file actually for this block looks different. What these files are are actually files that define what a block is rather than the prop, um, like the size of a block, for example. The size of blocks appears to be defined in the vehicle save XML rather than actually in the blocks XML. All right. So instead of like the, the vehicle definition of what a block is, is being edited where here you're actually editing like new entries or new blocks, new items that are going yeah, to be used. Based. Okay. So let's go back one. And now we have meshes. And I assume that's like the objects themselves, the 3D objects. Yeah. Yeah. It, that's that simple. It's just the 3D objects. And these are referenced by the uh, XMLs in the definitions folder. And defines how they look and what the size is and the color and all that stuff, right? Yes. All right. Cool. So nothing looks really. I don't know, threatening to the computer. There's no execution files. Doesn't seem like there's anything strange going on here. So how do we install this? So it's actually really quite simple. Um, you're going to first want to navigate to where you've got Stormworks installed. And probably the easiest way to do that is um, going into Steam, uh, going to the properties for Stormworks and clicking browse local files. Okay, let's do that. All right, so here we are. Now you can see all my games I got. Right click and properties yeah and then just uh, local files and browse local files browse okay right here boom and there we go we're uh, straight to it or what so you're actually going to want to go into the rom directory okay the meshes that you have in the um zip that you've downloaded you're simply going to just copy them into the meshes folder i'll have to zoom in because it's tiny Okay, so I have the meshes, and I'm going to, I guess, cut and paste. All right, so question. I'm going to move these meshes to the mesh folder. Is this going to overwrite anything I have in here already? Um, no, it shouldn't. I mean, we've we've said to people creating mods, avoid overwriting files that already exist. Uh, avoid overwriting because it's just it's a bad idea. Because then if people want to say uninstall something, they're going to have to reinstall. Stormworks to effectively to get all the original files back. So there should be nothing that overwrites anything. Yeah, nothing in, nothing in my mod is is referenced in, in the base Stormworks. So everything is just adds additional parts. It doesn't overwrite anything. No mod I've found so far does it, so... All right, so I'm going to hit copy. I haven't found any mods that, that do overwrite anything. I'm going to paste. I'm pasting mesh on mesh, right? I'm not going inside the directory. Yeah, don't put it inside the directory. Okay, so if there is any problems, it should pop up alert saying you're overwriting, which nothing happened. Okay, so the definitions, where do they go? So definitions, you're going to want to navigate to the ROM folder. Uh, ROM, like where you are now, the ROM folder, then you're going to want to go to data. Data. Uh, and then they're going to be copied into the definitions folder. Okay, I copy and paste. All right, nothing popped up, no warnings of overwriting files, so that's good. So is there anything else I have to do, or am I done? That's everything. If a mod um, has audio, then it's the same process. You just um, put it into the, uh, you just copy the audio into the audio folder. Uh, some mods as well might have subfolders in their um, meshes and audio folders. So there's the they those subfolders will have to exist in the games files. So how you've copied them over just by copying the parent folder, the meshes folder, and just copying it into the um, direct, the Stormworks directory is the easiest thing to do because you don't have to worry about making sure you're copying the right folders. Okay, so I am done. So we are back in Stormworks. My face is pointed towards the mountains and I'm going to turn around and what are we going to see? Here we go. Whoa, ta-da! We have ship parts. We have, what are these things called where you can like telegraph? Yeah. yeah. And do these telegraph. actually move or they don't move? Yeah, they move. They uh, they they function just as uh, stock throttles do. So uh, wow. there's no battery hooked up to it right now, so it's not moving. But okay, I um, noticed 
on the thing itself, it, the name says like Def M Zui Telegraph name. Is that something we can change? Uh, that's the name of the part. Um, if you, yeah, you can change it in your your specific build if you go to the uh, and the editor. What is it? the editor? Yeah. Yeah. But okay. um, the, they're, they're named this way as a as a like a like a file keeping like they keep things organized. So if, if you ever want to search for a certain creator's mods and only that creator's mods, you can just type in like ZUI for instance, and all of my mods will pop up in the uh, in the inventory tab. Yeah. Also, it helps like help people know what parts are modded uh, yeah. okay but i just what i was curious if that you know if you were built something you can change the name so it says you know engine one or something yeah and like the helm the helm here is it, it operates as a normal normal helm yeah that's like it would normally cool. and does this and the, compass uh, work the yep the compass works compass works Oh, neat. Uh, is anything else functional on, on these over here? Do they do anything? Uh, most of these parts, most of these parts are just uh, decorative. Uh, these chains, these chains are actually pivots. So they'll, they'll move and sway um, if the if a vehicle is moving. Oh, and, really? Uh, oh. These are all modular. So like this windlass right here at the back um, is its own separate piece. And then each chain link is its own separate piece. And then there's a end cap. And then you can make it as long or as short as you'd like. Oh, cool. So are these supposed to be, these thingamabobs here, are they supposed to be for tying down the boat to the dock or something? Yeah, they're all for mooring operations. Um, mm -hmm. You get bollards, capstans, stuff now, like that. are you able to add, like, a rope connector there so you could actually use it? Or not Not possible? Uh, you can, yeah. You can add a rope connector. And, um, these right now are functioning just as uh, decorative pieces, but, uh, yeah, that's easy to do to make it. A, uh, a rope node instead. All right, so here we are in the editor, and just to show you that these parts are now part of Stormworks, we're gonna go to the inventory, and I'm just gonna scroll down till we see some stuff. So he has the telegraph in the mechanics. I can click on it, and it has a description that is the name of the item. Are you able to put your own description here of what it is actually? Yeah, uh, when you edit the XML, um, like when I created the mod, I, I made my own descriptions for it. Okay, it seems like it's missing like the on and off descriptions and number of descriptions. Is that something that you just forgot or it's not added yet? Uh, may maybe, maybe, yeah, that, that might be why. Okay. Yeah, it's something you just forgot. It, it, yeah, it, yeah. That, all of the logic nodes can be labeled as in anything you like. Okay, cool. So then I just grab it, of course, just like any other block. And oh, this is worth noting. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. But an XML modded window has always been kind of difficult for me when I've like played around with them to like grab the actual window because it's not defining the grab area or whatever. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But but yeah. these items are fully, I guess, where you click on them is you can grab them like a normal object, I guess. Like you can grab them no matter where you click, right? Yeah. So so when you when you build your XML, you're building the collisions for it as well. And um, as, as long as it's set up correctly, um, the collisions should be like just normal Stormworks parts. You can grab it and place it, run into it. You're not going to run through it. They're not like no collisions. And so. you can also use the uh, the selection grid that you can actually select these like one piece, yeah, like, like a normal block. For by all means, they function as, as normal blocks. I mean, the game itself can't di differentiate between the modded parts and the non-modded parts. They're just normal blocks. I feel like you guys are trying to secretly convert me to use mods. That's what it feels like, because <laughs> these are really tempting. Oh, these are awesome. Okay, so I'm going to get out of here. It looks like everything works like you would expect. If I click on the logic, you can see the nodes for connecting things. What we're going to do now, I think we should install using the storm loader and installing the workshop item that was on top for a while. That sound good? Yeah, that's a good it. idea. So we are back on the desktop, and now we're going to try to install without doing it manually. This is where Luinator came in and did something that makes this completely easy, so you don't have to figure out the structure of the Stormworks directories. And I think that it does a few more things where, like, it easily uninstalls mods as well, right? Yeah, yeah. It basically works like, think of Nexus Mod Manager. Um, but this is just dedicated to working with Stormworks. All right, so I'm going to go back to the web page. The links are, of course, in the description. And this is to the GitHub. The GitHub is a repository of files where any programmer, I guess, can pretty much make one of these, 
put their files online for people to work on, share, and you can browse the code before it's actually compiled. Is that correct? Am I saying all that stuff right? Um, yeah, basically, GitHub is brilliant. It's ba ba all open, basically all open source software is um, added to GitHub generally. Um, and other than you know being able to browse the code, you can um, pull the code off GitHub and build it yourself on your own computer if you don't want to download the executable. Um, there's instructions on uh, on Stormloader's GitHub as well if you wanted to do everything yourself, you know, host the repository. Um, there's all instructions on how to get all of that integrated with the software, how to build it yourself, how to set everything up. So, yeah, I, I sort of am an advocate for open source software, and so hence why this is all open. Everything is open source here. Okay, but for the most part, this is the official Stormloader by Luminator. You can see it right here on the top left, and for right now, this is where you want to make sure you go because this is the guy that created the original Stormloader and this is kind of the official one. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, if it is posted anywhere else, I can't guarantee someone's not modified the executable. Um, get it off GitHub. It's always going to be up to date. And you know, you can always get support from me if you've got any issues. All right. Very good. Very good. All right. So where I'm on the page, where do I go to download it? I see lots so of stuff. You... If you go to releases, which is on the right hand side at the top, uh, sort of at the right hand side of the web page, there's, a, there's a, a link that says releases. Am I missing it? Or am I? Yeah. You, you're oh, right, releases. You just okay. Yeah. Yeah. Them. Okay. Download the latest. Okay. So I click that. Now. Uh, and then just do? download the zip that is there in assets. All right. So I don't need the source code. That would be if I was doing something fancy like you, right? Yeah, um, but obviously, if you are a developer and you know how GitHub works, you can, in your ID of choice, just pull the um, repository straight from GitHub without downloading the source code separately. All right, here I do. Click it. Now I have it downloaded. That was easy. It was quick, small. I'm gonna go ahead and scan this because we are downloading something from the internet. It's probably safe as can be, but you should take precautions with anything you download from the internet. So we're just gonna run the scan. No issues found and we seem to be good to go. All right, we're going to unzip it. Yep. All right, extract to here. And there is our file. Okay, let's look what's in here and what it's doing. All right, so I've seen lots of files. Most of it's just for the program running. So it will look a bit confusing to start with. Um, and what you're looking for is uh, just stormloader.exe. And I'd recommend that you create a shortcut to it and put the shortcut wherever you want. All the other files are just um, required for the program to run. Okay, so right click, uh, copy, and all right, paste a shortcut. Uh, yeah. All right, so there we go. I'm trying to make it so you can see it. I have this lovely wallpaper, but you can't really see the icons. <laughs> but it's right here, so it's right the, there. The icon for Stormloader was actually um, done by Vasilo, if I recall, a while ago. Um, so actually, thanks to him for the icon, because I'm not particularly good at iconography. Oh, there you go. It says Stormloader right on it with a little, like, wrench or something. All right, so this is the easy part. Now, you saw before we had to unzip the file. We had to go to the Stormworks directory, and then we had to move the files into the right spots for each folder. So this one, I assume we just go ahead and open it up, and it's going yes. to load a lovely interface. Welcome to Storm... It even gives us a welcome message. Welcome to Stormloader. Before we get started, I need some information from you. Click Next. Uh, you might want to also take a look at the user guide. Where's the user guide at? So the user guide is also available on GitHub. Um, it's linked in the README file when you go to the repository. Um, it's also available uh, just oh, obvious there. in that first list of files. Oh, there it is right it's here. slightly dated, but it's mostly useful still for the most part. Okay. And so here you can see real quick what it looks like. But you know what? People don't read. So we're not going to read that because... No one ever reads anything. So we're going to come over here and see what it does in guiding us to getting this installed without reading too much because, you know, people don't read. Next. All right. Where is your game installed? OK, I lied. It does need to know where your game installed. So what do we do? What's yes. the easiest way to do this? Um, so there's a few options here. You already know you already browse to the game's files when you did that manual install earlier. Yes. Um, or so, so you can go to Windows Explorer and just copy the path to the Stormworks root, or you can click Browse, um, and that will open a File Browse dialog, uh, oh. and you'll just be able to browse to the folder where Stormworks is installed on your 
computer. Okay. Obviously, that sort of requires you knowing where that's installed. So there's two options there. All right, let's do it the lazy way because I still have the windows open, I think. The ROM directory. Okay, so, so I want to... You go... don't want the ROM directory, you want the, yeah, that directory. You All just right. want to copy that path from there. All right, so we've got the storm works directory. Now yours is going to be different. Mine is on E, but yours is probably going to be on C. But there you go. Ready? Is that right? Does yep. that look good? Yep. And All if right. you click next. Where should the mods be extracted to? Okay. What does that mean? So I I recommend you leave this blank. This is... um internal for storm loader so when you load a mod it needs to create a copy of it that it can uh, use to identify what files are in the mod what's installed so this is sort of a um local directory that storm loader just uses so it knows what's going on you can leave this blank i'd recommend you leave it blank okay and it's automatically going to put them where it will automatically put them in the in storm loaders directory wherever you have um storm loader extracted to it will just create a folder called okay. uh, extracted oh so i put this on my desktop if i move this folder later will it screw everything up should i have put it someplace no, no because it will create it within um storm loaders folder oh, okay so it won't create it on the desktop it will create it in the same place as wherever the executable is located and then i can move that folder later to another drive or whatever it'll be um, fine yeah you can move the storm loader folder to another drive don't move the extracted folder unless you then go and change the settings to tell it where the mods are extracted to right totally makes sense okay so good good i'm gonna hit next i'm gonna leave that blank and now we have another lovely interface and we have add mod from file, browse online, launch, save profile, open profile, and I think that's it. Where do we start? So if you want to add a mod from a file that you've downloaded, um, most of these are distributed on the Stormworks Mod Inform Discord. Um, you'll get a .slp file in most cases. Um, this is a Stormloader package. Uh, and with that, all you do is you click the button that says add mod from file, browse to wherever you've saved that, um select it click ok and it will automatically install the mod and activate it uh, of course if if you don't want to do that um storm loader also has a repository uh, where a few creators have uploaded their mods to so if you click browse online and then browse repo you get a list of the mods and you can just click get on whatever one you want to install. All right. So in the back, we have all the cool ship parts. What can I do to find something that's different from that? Where would I go? What would I do? Repo. Browse online. Browse online. Okay. Yes. So if you click that and oh, click browse. Nexus. So <gasps> Nexus that. integration is work in progress. It's not actually included yet, but some of the base parts to make it work are already in the application. Oh, okay. That's cool. All right. You can resize the window if you want. <laughs> oh yeah, let's make it big. Oh, look. Look at all this stuff here. We've got disco lights or modular lights. We've got better buzzers. We've got tank parts, which looks like it has like a window and some cameras. We've got, what is that? Parts and stuff. Smaller parts and stuff. I guess resized uh, I love it. engines, right? Yeah, it's a bunch of smaller parts and some are balanced decently. And th there's the decoration here the, that went on the top of the workshop this week. And we have windows. Now, are these windows windows or are these windows XML files? Those are real windows. So I, I can actually click on these things and they won't freak out. Like I can click the window, right? Yeah, they're, they're really good. I've found very, very little issues with them. Okay. And do these, are these all sealable as well? Like it seals the space, seals the space? Yeah, I believe so. Okay. Uh, glass blocks, engine trinkets. All right. And small steam parts. Small yeah. steam parts. Etpem is one of the first mods ever made, but it's really I kind of, I think I kind of want to see these tank parts. All right. We're going to click get. Download complete. Where to go? So if you just uh, minimize the repository browser or close it, okay. whatever you decide. Uh, it will show up in the list of uh, activated mods and you'll see it's been automatically activated. Um, you can deactivate it by clicking the X or you can actually uninstall it completely by clicking the bin. I have a question. Uh, okay, so when I downloaded uh, Zooey's zip file, I could look inside it, I could see what the files were. How do I know what's being installed when I download these from the repository? Um, so if you actually go to Stormloader's directory, so that's on your desktop in the file you put on your desktop, um, oh yes, yes. Okay, right here. Yeah. 
and you go to the extracted folder okay you parts. can then look inside it and see uh, all of the data it's effectively the same format as the zip that we downloaded earlier okay so if you do want to have a look okay and what prevents what prevents someone from putting an execution file in the zip files that we're downloading from the repository so nothing is actually being run so when you click download on a mod from the repository um while it can't be explicitly scanned for an executable file um nothing is being run so stuff's only being copied into the games directory oh. so unless you were to directly run the file yourself um it's not going to be an issue all right so my best bet is if i'm worried about something like that i can go into the storm loader directory and I can go to extracted and i could probably just run my scanner here and make sure everything's good and there we go nothing found so i mean that's just extra precaution uh, that you can so probably do another thing that would work as well so i recently added um support to install uh, manually install zip files um, and the code for that explicitly checks for um specific file types oh. so it will only it will only copy dot mesh dot od ogg and dot xml okay. files so if you we... have to change the filter to a dot zip rather than a dot slp if you change you need to change the filter to a dot zip or it won't show it oh okay cool there it is okay so here it is i'm gonna click on it and it has a Little red it X. hasn't activated because there's a bug. You just need to manually activate it by clicking the tick. By clicking the check mark? Yep. All right. And it should activate itself. All right, so this gives us an alternative to installing it from the repository. This is a zip file. We downloaded it. Now I can install it. And then if I wanted to check that file, I could do that beforehand. But what you said before was that you are checking for specific file types to install, correct? Um, yes, for the .zip, I'm checking for specific file types. If it's a .slp, I'm going on the assumption that it's matching the criteria set out for how an SLP should be laid out, so I shouldn't need to check file types. But if people do want me to do that, I can add that into the code. Okay. okay I'm going to break Storm Loader and pretend like I'm really dumb. And what happens if I <laughs> install his, his pack now with the zip file installed? Do you know what's going to happen? The file name is different. That's the only difference here. But it will have overwritten the parts because they're still the same parts. Okay, let's make this bigger. That's, that's the only thing because it's a different file name. Because I can own because of how I get the data for file names off the server, it, it will it generates the file name when you download it from the repository. Gotcha. Does this mess it up if I delete it now? Is it going to delete this pack as well? It's not going to delete that, but you'll have to. Uh, should be okay actually you'll delete that and it should automatically reactivate everything so there shouldn't be any issues oh so this one will still be okay even though it's like the same files it should still be okay because if i recall my code for deletion reactivates all the mods um this may be a bug that i haven't tested if you're not sure just click the tick and it will ensure that it's definitely activated okay like that okay i just want to see if i can break your stuff that's all <laughs> <laughs> don't worry it's good i need people to test it because it's all written in my free time and Testing all of these sort of outlying conditions is, is quite difficult. All right. So there is a button on the right that says save profile. Do I want to do that before I go into the game or anything like that? Um, no, you don't have to. That's if you wanted to um, just have a select number of mods enabled. So you wanted to join a server and you only wanted specific mods enabled. Okay. So rather than going through and manually ticking or crossing the mods, you just say, I load this profile and it'll automatically enable or disable whatever ones. If the profile says you need mods that you haven't got installed, it will tell you what mods aren't installed. It won't install them itself though. You'll have to go and then find those mods. Okay, cool. So now we've, we've installed these files manually with the zip file. And then we use the storm loader, which shows you how quickly you can install these and how easily you can browse for new parts. Now, I think we want to play with these parts. How do we do that? Do we have to hit this launch button or can we just open up the Stormworks we already have and they're there? Before we go into Stormworks, we want to install the Super Deck back. So let's browse again. Browse repo. And where is it? There it is. There it is. Let's get it. This might, it's quite a big mod. It might take a while. 
Ah, oh, there it says. Download complete. You're slowly converting me to mods. I need to stop this. I'm having too much fun. Okay. And I don't have to click anything. It's automatically checkmarked. Yep, it's automatically activated. All right. Let's go back to Stormworks again. All right. So we are back in Stormworks. And I'm going to turn around and we're going to look at the train that we saw earlier and see how it looks. Ready? One, two, three. All right. So I've got rivets in the front now. Very cool rivets. We've got side pieces here that I think we're missing. Oh, it's rivets again. More rivets. Lots of rivets. And then if we go into the cab, what are we going to see? Ah, oh, let's see. Oh, look, we've got uh, valves and a, what do you call this thing? The, this, I don't know, throttle train thing? Wheel brake? Yeah, there's, the, there's like a big reverser. Oh, wow. That is, that is, that is so wanted. This is a wanted part by a lot of train builders. Wow, and the valves. That's a wanted part by everybody. Oh, look at this. It has a brake. Holy moly. It's saying reverser, but isn't that the brake? I think that's the brake. But whatever. And then yeah, we have a little lamp. Does that lamp go on or is it just for Jack? Oh, oh, the lamp goes on. Wait, what's below it? Is that a bell? Or is that oh, no, a switch? It's a light switch. It's an old timey light switch. Oh, wow. Are these new rope things right here? These rope? Um, yeah, these are new rope anchors. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm totally sold, but I'm not going to look at any more of this because I'll want to build a steam engine. All right. I mean, we do have cool lights on the front. Oh, we do? What kind of lights do we have on the front that are yeah, cool? Let me, uh, let me turn the headlights on. Okay. Now, the two bottom ones are boat lights, normally used for navigation. So these ones only shine forward, but, you know, there, there's ones that shine around. And yeah. there's also a big rivet, which you can see on the these little pipes. Where am I looking? See this pipe right here? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a little cap on top. So we use big rivets for that. There's big rivets on the front. Oh, here. that's a rivet on a pipe. Gotcha. Okay. And this train doesn't show it, but there's a very nice, like, eye beams and stuff and doors. So, yeah, steam builders or train builders are going to love these parts, especially these parts inside here. Oh, look at the floor. Is that a texture or is that... No. That's real. That's real, like, geometry. And how does this impact frame rate? Do you know? Um, Basically, this stuff used in, you know, normal amounts shouldn't cause problems unless you have a gigantic panel of it. And then <gasps> you might start feeling it. It's a train whistle! No way! Oh! Two train whistles! Alright. God darn, you guys are selling me good on this one. I can show you my uh, nuclear train if you like, because it showcases some of the other cool parts. Okay, feel free, show us something Show us something different that I haven't seen. Go ahead. It's kind of a chonky nuclear train. First steam train actually built in the game, I just retrofitted it with mods. Are these custom blocks on the front here? Custom blocks in the front. These uh, railings are. And these ladders too, right? Yeah, the ladders. Yeah. And the railings? Oh. Yeah. We don't have any new train wheels yet. Have you have any train wheels built yet? No, people are working on that. But we got some new doors in here that this train has. It's something I love. If you notice behind these doors, there are half blocks. So when you open it... You don't get stuck. Away. Yeah. And then you have all these thingamabobs. Very cool. Okay. The doors are nice. Look at that. Yeah, this particular train's refuelable. Actually, the whole reactor assembly just comes out of this door and up and out the roof. But... Yeah. And again, these doors and everything, all these parts seal the compartment just like a regular block, right? That yeah. Is, that's I'm correct. actually using the three long wedges and the sh uh, the bridge windows right on the side here. All right, so now that we look at the trains, I want to see something that floats that has some cool modded parts. Can we look at a ship like that? Anybody have one? Yeah, I've got uh, my SS City of New York's got all my ship parts. Oh, the see, I kind of wanted to see that one. Did that one make it to the top spot, to the top of the workshop? Uh, it made it, it made it pretty close. I'm not sure if it actually made it into the top five, but it made it to the front page at least. So this is the SS New York. Is this a real ship, Zooey? Yeah, this is the uh, SS City of New York. It's actually famous for being the ship that almost uh, 
hit the uh, Titanic uh, after as it was leaving the Southampton. So this is a steamship, though, right? Yes. And so have, have you messed with steam on this ship yet, or is this using regular engines? It's using the regular engines. I actually haven't had time to uh, dive into the new steam update yet. So all of my ships are still on the old uh, regular engine. This looks lovely. Okay, so where should I look to see some custom parts, front or back? Where should I start? Uh, front. Front would be a good place uh, up to the bridge. So you don't have your anchors on this one that I see, right? You don't have the custom anchors? Oh, there's a custom anchor. Yes, I do in the front. Or what about the chain stuff? The chain, anchor chain. The chains I decided to leave off of, it was just kind of a, because of the wedges, it's kind of kind of weird to have the wedges, the chains go up the wedges. It, I couldn't figure it out, so I just left them off. Okay, and then you got your, I don't know what these are called, funnels, air tubes, I don't know what they're called, but you've got these. Yeah, just like vents uh, to exhaust air or bring in, bring in cool air. Okay, and then if we come, I don't, I don't know where to go, but where is the, the helm? The helm is up here if you find a ladder. Okay. Going up. There you go. And then and then this second ladder takes you up to the helm. Oh, second ladder. Oh, second ladder. Okay. Second ladder. Oh, we're outside? Yeah. The dude stood outside in the rain driving? Oh, yeah. Oh, holy moly. they did it back in the day. All right. So how do we get this thing going? Just because I'm curious. All right. Well, this one actually has a full steam room. So if we would want to get this running, we would have to go down to the steam room and turn on the boilers. Oh, God. That's so much work. No cheat sheet? No. Uh, I can take you there if you'd like. All right. Let's 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 do it. Or we could just or we could just no clip into let's it. Let's pretend like we walk down there and actually clip down there. Okay. Here we go. We're walking down. All right. Let's clip. See, I thought we were going to no clip, but we're actually <laughs> we're having to walk down there. Oh, boy. Down here. Okay. Aha! We found the engines. Although, I saw the engines are actually down lower. The real engines, right? Yeah. Yeah. These are just... Uh, They're lies. These are, these are lies and deceit. Okay. Light broiler. Wow. Got some and texture and some start engine. heat lamps. And these, uh, these boilers are actually from uh, Squiddly Quiddly. He makes a lot of ocean liners too. These are his boilers. Oh, there went Delta. Do I start both yeah. or do they both start together? Uh, I pressed the button. It looks like there's spaghetti inside the boilers. <laughs> I did. Yep. As well. are, are they on? That's exactly what it is. Yeah, they're on. I hear them. All right, we can cheat back to the helm now, right? All right, so we started the boilers. We are back on top at the helm. Now, can we get this thing moving? And they just function like normal, normal throttle, normal helm. So, but they don't go ding, 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 ding. No, they don't. I oh. can awesome. figure that out. Just the day when we can do that. You're gonna need to turn the clutch on. Yeah. Oh, clutch where? You need a. Oh my god. Where am I looking? Oh, you could make them. So, so you could make them um, ping. You just need a lure script uh, and a buzzer that played that ping noise. That you just every time it went past a certain threshold on the front, it pinged. That would be. I would love that. I, I don't know anything about lure though, to be honest. Actually, you could probably do a threshold ping. Yeah, actually, yeah. you could do it that well. This looks nice. This is a nice looking boat. Ship. It's a nice looking ship, not a boat. All right, so this is the SS New York by Zuken, and of course the links to these items for the trains and the boat, sorry, ship, are in the description below, and you can download these for yourself. Although, remember, these are requiring mods. So we've showed you how to install them two different ways and how easy it is to get them running and how to make sure that you're comfortable with the files by scanning them, looking at what's inside them, and, you know, and, and of course installing them manually. But now I have to ask, let's say I don't like your mods. I think that they're crashing my game. I'm just making that up, they're not. But let's pretend like I think that they're crashing my game and I want to get rid of them. How easy is it to get rid of these files? So if you've installed a mod with Stormloader, 
it's as simple as clicking the X or clicking the bin icon next to the uh, mod uh, and the list of, uh, list of installed mods on Storm Loader. If you've installed them manually, it's a bit more difficult because you need to remember what files you copied into the games directory and then go and delete them. Uh, but there are no permanent changes if you if you install and uninstall the mod. All right. So basically, if I install them manually, the best bet would be to like uninstall Stormworks and then reinstall Stormworks, pretty much. That would be the that's the easiest thing, unless you remember exactly what files you copied into the games directory. Right. Yeah, like most, most of the files are labeled and modded as well, so you can find them pretty easily. Oh, in your oh yeah, you can. You should be able to just like and m at, underscore. Out of curiosity, if I like, if I know that. I know what the the names of the the models are, and I only deleted those and left the the other data mesh files or what are the data files. Would it cause problems? Basically, if you ripped out the XMLs and left the meshes, there'd be no consequence because the game wouldn't know to call those, and there's no other XMLs to call them. So it's fine. okay. So the XML files is what populates the the inventory screen. Yeah. Okay. You kill the XML keep the uh mesh you're fine it'll just get rid of the mod parts if you get rid of the mesh but keep the xml then you're kind of having ghost parts so we are back at the desktop and i just want to show you uh what we were talking about when we were talking about uninstalling so if i've used the storm loader i can basically can i just uncheck the box or hit delete what do i do just press the x will that uninstalls the mod, and it doesn't remove it from your computer. If you want to completely remove everything, you press the bin. Okay, so I'm it like... should work because parts are loaded into RAM. Yeah. Okay, and so I have a little X, and it shows me that that's basically uninstalled. So what Stormloader does is it is tracking what files it moved into the Stormworks directory, and it's saying I don't need those anymore, and it's moving them out or deleting them from the Stormworks directory. Nothing else, just the mod files, correct? Just the mod files, yes. All right, and so I can actually uninstall all of these. So let's say I don't like the tank parts because I, I don't like the color. I can uninstall them, and then I can keep my other ones. So I do like the ship decoration mod, and I'm going to keep those because I'm a ship builder. So I don't need the tank parts. I have the ship parts. I'm good to go, and now they're reinstalled, and the tank parts are gone when I start Stormworks well, up, right? <laughs> Yes, and if you don't even want to have any record of there being tank parts on your system, you can completely delete the mod by pressing the bin icon. Okay, so now I'm like, I really don't like the tank mod. I'm just kidding. I'm not being mean to whoever developed that. But now it's gone. And this is using the storm loader. So if you installed with the zip manually, which is if you feel comfortable with that, you can do that. But if you want to uninstall, you're going to have to... I uninstall Stormworks. Make sure you delete those directories. I'm assuming it won't delete the files um, when you uninstall it. And then reinstall Stormworks, and then you're good to go. But the Storm Loader seems like the way to go if you want to be able to control the mods coming in coming out. And again, we showed you if you go to the Storm Loader directory, the extracted files, you can always see what you're downloading and what's in these directories. There's the whistles. Those whistles are cool. The reason for this video is we really wanted you to be comfortable with what Stormloader does, what the modifications are doing to Stormworks, and that you can understand what is being moved around so that if you want to delete something or something is not working the way you want, you can, you know, remove these mods. So if you have any questions, you can go ahead and hit up their Discord. It's in the description below. And who are the best people to inquire to if you have a problem? So if you've got a problem with Stormloader, um, go to me, as as I'm to the person who's been developing it. If you need help with modeling, I've not really done much mod creation recently. I'm probably not the best person to ask. While I do sort of have quite in-depth knowledge of the XML formats and how to set up models, it's probably better to speak to one of the more experienced modders. And on the Discord itself, there's also um, some some like the help section. It's got pinned uh, pinned videos. And what I learned was a uh, a video that actually taught me how to model Blender. It was step by step, and the, that's all pinned in the Discord. Yeah. Well. Right. I didn't even mention that. If you actually want to build some of these yourself, it's a good resource to go to the Discord, and you've got people like Zui who can help you uh, through the process of adding your own models 
No, go ahead. So I've I've done a tutorial that explains the basics of creating a mod right from the very basics of um, setting up a model in Blender, getting it prepared to go through the mesh converter, um, setting up all of the XMLs and the directory format, and then installing the mod in Stormloader. It's only a basic video, but it does teach you, if you wanted to just make a very simple part, how you can set that up. Very cool. All right, so uh, I think that's it. Is there anything you guys want to add? Yeah, that'd just be pointing out a little feature of Stormloader, whereas when you browse the repository, you'll see little, uh, I guess, stickers on the parts that say uh, SMF verified. And generally these have like been looked over by one of our members on SMF normally a QC team or you know higher ranking members where they'll they'll have experience with the mod and they'll be like hey this is this is good and it's not a buggy mess now generally parts on this list are going to be pretty like decent quality though since they went through the effort of putting it up here you can also upload your own using the upload button oh okay where am i logging and signing up to so all this does is um, creates a very basic um, identifier that, al that allows you just to manage the mods that you have on the repository. So uh, it's all very secure. Your password's hashed, so no one can ever see that. Um, and it doesn't require any you know, extra information from you. It just requires a username and then a simple password. And if you click sign up, it will tell you that user's been added. Um, and then if you click sign in, you'll just get a simple control panel that lets you upload uh, mods, which has just gone in the background there. Okay. But whatever I upload, it will not be verified until you guys take a look at it, right? Yeah, it's got to be manually verified. But even if a part, even if a mod isn't verified, it doesn't mean it's not good. It either means, you know, someone's not got round to it or they've not asked for it to be verified. Right. It's just sort of a QC thing saying, hey, we like this mod load, so we're going to endorse it. Right. No, I'm just trying to dispel the fears around the mods. So I think something that helps a lot of people is if they see this SMF verified, it means you guys have taken a look at the files, you know what's in them, and that, you know, they're going to work properly in Stormworks. Yeah. Um, and again, if you're fearful of mods, you know, avoid the ones that don't have the SMF verified. There should be nothing wrong with these. I don't think people are out to, you know, hurt Stormworks, but, you know, just in case, if you're fearful, go with the verified versions. I think that's just good advice. So, yeah. Uh, anything else? No, I'd just like to thank you for helping us out with this and supporting the community. Oh, thank you. No problem. It's it's good to have a, a content creator come and you know give us some recognition. Well, I try to make community videos, so hopefully this helps uh, with people that are, you know, fearful of mods and makes them comfortable using them. I don't use mods. You guys know I don't use mods, and the reason I don't use mods is because I feel like the developer should be either creating something that supports the mods or releasing new decorations like on a bi-weekly basis with the minor updates. So when I build stuff, I don't build with mods because if someone comes to my channel, I want to make sure that they see this is what you can build with what the game is uh, at vanilla level default parts. So if I start using mods, I feel like that kind of gives a false uh, representation of the game. So that's why I don't use mods. But these are tempting. These are so tempting. But for me, I just can't do it right now until uh, it's natively supported. So I think that is it. I think if you have any questions, make sure, make sure you go to the Discord, talk to these guys. They seem friendly. They haven't given me a hard time so far during this whole video. And it looks like they're working on giving you parts and details to make your builds more fun and just, you know, give you a better experience in Stormworks by adding, you know, parts. I guess. I think I'm saying the same thing over and over again, but I just want to make it clear that this is a, a fun thing, not a scary thing, and uh, you should go ahead and enjoy it. So uh, that is it for today. Thank you, Zuikwan. Thank you, Ludinator something numbers. I don't know what the numbers were. 
Luminator 56. 56. And we got Delta, I want to say X something. Yeah, it's just CX-10, but everybody calls me Delta anyway. Delta CX-10. And uh, again, you can reach all these guys on the Discord if you have questions, comments, concerns. And I think that's it, guys. Shall we say goodbye? Thanks. Goodbye. Yeah. All right. Goodbye. Thanks for watching the video. And thanks for joining me. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>